Yes, as Jim said, I'm Deborah Tavares, and um, I, we're running about five different websites. And our main website is stopthecrime.net. And we're here to talk about the climate action plans, and we're going to get to that. But before we get to the climate action plans, you need to understand why the climate action plans are going to do to you what they're going to do and how this happened. Because this is very serious. Um, just a question, how many of you realize something's wrong? Pretty much all of you. Okay, that's good. Because you're going to realize there's a little more wrong than you may have thought. And what is important with this conversation is that you allow yourself to think about things you may not have heard before and um, that uh, you have an open mind. Uh, I will tell you that everything you're going to hear is fully documented, not only government documents, but uh, resolutions. And you're going to see a table over there, and at the end, when we have q and I'll go over there and show you. Those are representative of just a few of the climate action plans that our research team has researched globally. And the climate action plans are global. They're in Iceland. They're in China. They're in Russia. They're in all of South America. And they're right here in Santa Rosa. And uh, so in order to understand how this takedown or coup d'etat with these plans occurred here, you need to understand a little background. So that's what we're going to go over right now. And this is an hors d'oeuvre. This is not intended to explain the depth of this, because really I want you to be able to walk out with your brains still in your skull. <laughs> so, yeah. And I will tell you, I didn't know what I didn't know. And at first when I heard this, I was extremely skeptical. I didn't believe some of the things I heard. And uh, there was an instance when my husband and I uh, were at an, uh, an event, and some people came up and were talking to us about uh, a certain situation. And I told my husband, oh, that person belongs in a straitjacket. And c'est la vie, I, you deal with them. And I walked away. Well, this person appeared again a few months later at another meeting and was talking about the same topic. And um, I just thought it was absolutely nuts. And I'm not going to tell you what the topic is yet. But I'll tell you that I tasked my daughter to find out about this topic because I thought it was rather um, benign. And about a week or so later, at 3.30 in the morning, we received a phone call. And our daughter was sobbing on the other end of the line. And I thought that something had happened to one of our grandchildren. And she said, Mom, I looked into that topic that you told me about. And she said, it's real. It's real. So we had an emergency meeting with our family. Suddenly, uh, our retired life was starting to shape up and look very different. And um, I was extremely skeptical, but uh, I started to see that information. And for those of you that are taking notes, that topic ended up being uh, a, a, an encounter that I had here in Sonoma County with Ted Turner. And it is on YouTube, and you can see it. Uh, it's called Ted the Terrible Turner. It's on YouTube, Ted the Terrible Turner. I'm not going to go into that topic right now. Uh, that can come at a later meeting um, after you've heard what we have to say this evening and hopefully uh, done a little homework to understand our reality. So who's running America and the climate action plans? And what does the silent weapons system mean? What does that mean? Okay. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. I want you to think about that. This was former CIA director uh, William Casey, and he told us this. And I don't think people paid much attention. I certainly didn't. And this is on our website, stopthecrime.net. So as we look forward, uh, we look at who's running America. And again, this is only meant to be a small portion of this evening's topic, but it's important to understand we're not. 
we're not running America. And uh, in fact, globalists are running America. And when you look at Senate Report 93549, it's very, very clear. Um, our country, every year since 1933, has initiated a perpetual emergency war powers. Every year, it's reinitiated by every sitting president. And what that means is that when we're under a perpetual emergency powers act, the Constitution has been suspended. The Constitution has been suspended. We're under corporate law. We're not under constitutional law. And I can tell you, when I started to research this and investigate this, it was heartbreaking and depressing. And I felt very deceived and betrayed. But the documents tell us this. So this is one area that is going to take some time, I think, for people to digest. But I will just tell you, in order to maintain dictatorial control and authorization uh, that many divisions of government agencies, corporate government agencies, the executive branch, we know that decisions are coming from the executive branch by executive order. That is the way it was set up through this. And that explains why we are out of control and we don't have control. It's coming from the executive branch. And the Senate report sits on top of what occurred in 1933. We were never taught this in school, at least I wasn't. And I can tell you, we're in a school right now. This is a school. <laughs> and I thought, how appropriate that we're in a school. And we get to talk about what we were not taught in school, because I know there are many of you out here right now that are fighting against Common Core. And you realize that this is going to completely change what our children learn in school that they're going to learn in science that global warming is a reality and it's not. Uh, there are many um, aspects of Common Core that already happened to all of us when we were in school. So how many of you have heard of what happened in 1933? Okay, well you're gonna hear about that now. Okay, what happened in 1933 is critical to understand what we're what our foundation is that is being built up to why we're here now, all knowing something's very wrong. Um, there was a, a bankruptcy that was concocted right after um, the Great Depression, when many of our grandparents were still struggling to survive. And uh, what happened was they were expatriated. They had no knowledge of this. They certainly did not give their consent. America's gold was stolen by the international bankers. Our gold and silver was stolen. And um, we were collateralized as a nation against this concocted debt. What was collateralized? Our property, our equity, our children, and our souls, our souls. So I won't get into how the souls become collateralized, collateralized because that's a different conversation. But you need to understand what moved forward from there, what the bankers um, created. And um, it's important to understand and take a look at Senate Report 93549. It is on StopTheCrime.net. It's on the home page. There's a large yellow section on StopTheCrime.net that will talk about who's running America. And this also you can download from the website. It talks about the bankruptcy of America and the corporate United States and the New World Order and how the Uniform Commercial Code replaced the United States Constitution. Extremely important to understand. We're a, a nation, we're USA Inc. and we're, we're running on a corporate structure it has a very significant structure. It's based on contracts. And we're going to get into that here in a bit because some of these books on the table are contracts that have been signed for us and implemented for us. And you don't know about this because you don't need to. You don't need to. <laughs> they don't think that you need to. 
Now, um, recently there's been this video going around on the net called USA Inc. Depopulation and You with uh, Deborah Tavares. And uh, I think she has this site, StopTheCrime.net, or she refers to it anyway. And she talks about in this video a document called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Um, I came over here to read this document and found it quite, quite interesting. So I'm going to go through the whole document here in this video. Uh, the original video, I'll put links to the USA Inc. Depopulation, and I want to thank Ashley Law for referring that video to me. It's uh, very disturbing, and this document is very disturbing as well. So I will include links to this and to the actual video. And it's, uh, it takes a little while to get through. It's 44 pages long, but there's also a lot of technical pages in here that I'm just gonna scroll past. And if you care to read them up yourself, pause the video to read those technical parts of it. But uh, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully you can get all the way through it. Okay, I wanted you to know that you don't have to read the 44 pages. You can actually go to stopthecrime.net and listen to this wonderful man who created the YouTube so you can listen to him read it to you. And I would suggest that you read it, it is, or listen to it. It's one of the most important 44-page documents that you could ever read. And um, essentially, when you build upon the Senate Report 93549, which identifies all of you and me as enemies of the government, then you build upon the Silent Weapons document, which is a technical research manual that was put together in the 40s by the U.S. Air Force, Rockefeller, the International Bankers, and Harvard University. Uh, it is a manual that is um, intended for economic domination of the world and control of all energy. Now, energy is not what you think about, just PG&E and water and gas. It's your energy. We're all energy, and we're frequencies. And it's important to understand, they plan to control it all. Now, they say in the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document that when you have a few wealthy people with the methodologies and the goal to control all energy on the planet, and they have not told us, it is considered a declaration of war. And so the Silent Weapons document is a declaration of war. In fact, William Cooper has it in the very front of his book, Behold a Pale Horse. And I would recommend that you read his book. He was killed um, for all of the reasons that he understood what was occurring. So um, the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document then builds upon the fact that you're all the enemy of the state, and now war has been declared. And I didn't believe that either. <laughs> but I can tell you that the documents prove it. There are other documents beyond this as well. Okay, this is a quote out of the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document. And we have um, the availability uh, at a print shop in Roanoke Park. If any of you want, there's um, information on the greeting desk at the front door. And you can get a source document printed up like this that has a number of documents in it. Um, it's, I like it because it's large and you can make notes and tag it and use it. And uh, again, this is right out of the Silent Weapons document. It says an excerpt from page seven. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the moat of ignorance Ins insulating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class, all of us. With such an initial handicap, even the brighter, lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order peace and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Now the reason why the Silent Weapons document is so important is they wrote it and it's in their words. And um, 
what I found with the research group that I'm involved with, we want to read their documents. Um, this is what their plans are, and they tell us very bluntly. And they don't spare words. So you can see that they don't spare words. They're enslaving us by lack of knowledge. Um, this is um, a flyer uh, that we put together. It's really daunting because the Statue of Liberty is uh, surrounded by rising seas. This is going to happen to you, they tell you, if you do not implement the climate action plans. There will be sea level rising, there will be massive droughts, storm events, and hunger and disease and illness. If you do not accept willingly the climate action plans, this is what they tell you, and we'll see that inside the plans themselves. But again, for sake of not being able to maybe read that, um, everything the corporations and international bankers have been doing is one gigantic fraud, and all of it at our expense. Disinformation and manipulation by the international bankers' corporate structure to centralize control of all people, land, energy, resources, technologies, and economies. We must expose the hidden secret of these corporations, universities, and institutions set to control all emerging technologies that will rebuild the world's transportation, civil, manufacturing, physical infrastructure with cyber infrastructure, computers, networks, and sensors. Now many of you are noticing the cameras everywhere. They're on all the street corners, they're up the freeways, they're on buildings, they're everywhere. There's sensors everywhere. The surveillance in the United States has already imprisoned us. You can go to, uh, you can look at Mount Weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R. It is a uh, underground facility that was built outside of Washington, D.C., about 47 miles outside of Washington, D.C. in the 50s. And it houses the intention to incarcerate every single one of us with data collection and tracking and monitoring and sensors. So what you're hearing Edward Snowden say right now is not a new revelation at all. We were told in the silent weapons document exactly what they intended to do. And I'm going to just go over a couple of these things because I think it's vitally important that you understand the level of surveillance and tracking and monitoring that are planned. So on page 8 of the silent weapons document, they talk about the general concepts. But what they also talk about is the definition of a silent weapons system. And the definition, they say, is when a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts and adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, both psychological and economic, become too great and they crack up. They also tell us, therefore, the silent weapon system is a type of biological warfare. It attacks our vitality, our options, our mobility of individuals of a society by knowing that's the data collection. That's Bluffdale, Utah. That's the cameras. That's all the tracking. That's the camera in your computer screen when you're sitting behind your computer. That is the flicker rate, and that's what's happening on your, on your televisions. Uh, everything that's coming wireless into your home. That's the wires within the walls of your home. It's all tracking. They talk about by knowing and understanding and manipulating and attacking our sources of natural and social energy and our physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. And they say that they will control it all. Now what is also very important is what Rothschild discovered about energy. He said he discovered there was a basic principle of power influence and control over people as applied in economics. The principle is very simple, quote, 
When you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. So we've had a great many people assume the position of power. And because we have been intentionally kept very busy, uh, we have given uh, our trust to those that represent us, and they don't. And as far as the data collection in this 44-page document, they talk about wanting to know, and keeping in mind, this was put together in the 40s. And it was adopted at the very first Bilderberg meeting in 1954 in the Netherlands. And they wanted to know back then, in the 40s, about each and every single one of you. The what, where, why, when, how, and who. They were going to look at general sources of information. They were going to look at telephone taps. This is in the 40s. Analyzing your garbage. Surveillance. Behavior of your children in school. They were also going to know how you lived based on the food that you ate, the shelter that you lived in, the clothes that you purchased, the transportation. They also would know uh, your phone bills because they would look at your itemized phone calls. They would know if you were married because they would look at your marriage certificates and birth certificates, etc. They would know your friends, your associations, your political affiliation. They would know your personal paper trail because they would know your banking account statements, your credit card purchases. Everything was tagged and planned to be tagged back in the 40s with the universal product code. This is no new news. We didn't read this 44-page document, and we weren't in a school that told us any of this. And you are right now. And you can pull these documents down for yourself, and I hope that you do. Because that's only how you're going to learn what we can do. Now, as I proceed, it's going to sound a little bit daunting. And it is. And if you're concerned, that's good. You should be. But what we are also going to talk about are solutions. And that's the most important thing. But we have to work our way to the solutions. And we can't get to solutions without understanding what the problem is. So I'm outlining the problem. So I don't want you to have your chin on your chest too soon. Um, not too soon. Um, they also talked in the silent weapons document that other methods of attaining data from us would be through our IRS forms. They said that if they gave us more write-off ability uh, by putting more detailed information in the IRS forms, they could track and monitor us further. They also are using welfare, social security, USDA food stamps, and grants and subsidies. They say this, the principle for these ploys, the citizen will almost always make the collection of information easy if he can operate on the free sandwich principle. Eat now and pay later. We're paying dearly now for the information that our parents gave them and we didn't know and they didn't know. But now you're learning, you're hearing in the documents. They also go on to talk about government sources via intimidation, the IRS, OSHA, the census, etc. They'll learn your patterns of living. Again, your belief systems, your contacts, how you vote, your friends, your strengths and weaknesses. And they tell us that um, they will keep the public ignorant. These are their words, this is in their document. They say they will, main access, they will maintain access to control and prices for feedback, and they will do shock testing. They will uh, implode the economy, and they will charge us more through shock testing. They would know how we're receiving all this information based on the receipts and the amount of drugs and alcohol that we use. That would show our mental stability at that time. So very important to understand the depths of this document. They say they will destroy our opportunities and they will allocate our opportunities. They will control the economic environment. They will control the availability of raw materials, our capital, our bank rates. They will control inflation of the currency. They will control possession of property. And they will control industrial capacity. 
This is all in the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. And it goes into much more detail uh, than I have time to go into at this point. Literally, the Silent Weapons document could be an entire uh, discussion. So I just wanted you to understand, primarily, it's a declaration of war. And we're the enemy. Um, what is also extremely important to understand is that the federal and state governments are not real. They are privately owned corporations called governments. And we'll get into more information so you can check into that. Um, they're not real. They're privately owned corporations called governments. In other words, we have a system where we have banks and corporations that have been posing as legitimate governments, and they're not. It's USA Inc. In fact, it's Earth Inc. It's a corporate system. It's a corptocracy. And we were left out of that lesson plan. We didn't know. And um, it's important to understand our judicial system is, uh, serves the corporations, not us. That's why when we go to court, we generally don't prevail. And that's why the years that we spend in court and the money we spend in court, that money goes to the Federal Reserve, which has, of course, nothing to do with federal and has absolutely no reserve. Um, now, we must not consent to these lawless corporate statutes that were created to increase debt and enslave all of us, and that's what's happened. It's important to get a fundamental understanding of how this occurred, and we're going to have some references at the end uh, that I would encourage everyone to take a look at so that you understand. Now, only 10 days before John F. Kennedy was assassinated, he gave a speech at Columbia University. And he said this, and I'm going to read it because I think it's so important, and a lot of people missed this one. But it says, quote, For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system that has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. We didn't hear that, we didn't read it, and we didn't know what that meant. Well, we're starting to feel more uncomfortable with what we all know is not real. And so when we think back and we look, we build up on history, and we've been denied history. The Silent Weapons document is a subversion of history. It is the creation of lawless laws. It is global manipulation of the population and enslavement by lack of knowledge. And unless we understand what our reality is, we're not going to be able to effectively oppose this. And that's what this is about this evening. This is the Iron Mountain Report. I recommend everybody listen to this document. I mean, read, listen to the documentary. It's a blueprint for tyranny. It came out of the 1960s when John F. Kennedy was president. Uh, they commissioned experts to look at what the United States would look like if we should transition out of a time of war into a golden age of peace. And Kennedy was assassinated prior to the completion of this report. And when this report was given to Johnson, he said because of the content, it's never to be given to the American people. Well, a whistleblower leaked this document, and the government said it was a hoax. And all of our parents believed it. We were all too young, I think, to know. But our parents believed it was a hoax if they were not too busy to even know that it existed at the time. But I can say to you that it is uh, 
a documentary that I would recommend everyone watch. In fact, we have some copies of the CD out on the desk. They're only $5. I would recommend that you buy it, make copies of it, get it out, show it to your neighbors. It's so important to understand this. And what is this? Well, the Iron Mountain Report talks about how they were going to subvert education, exactly what Orlean and others in this room have been fighting so hard against. It talks about what we're now dealing with the Obamacare. It talks about how they needed to invent a replacement for war. They needed something so horrific and so impactful that it would be believable globally and it would injure every single one of you equal to the effects of war. So they decided that that needed to be invented and they invented global warming. They said at the time that they would have to bring the ecology up to enough damage by damaging the e ecology with the corporate structure. NASA and the corporations have damaged our world intentionally to seduce us into the false illusion that it's our fault, that we have to now believe in scarcity and we now have to reign in the population because there's too many of us. And that's what the report talks about, how they invented global warming and many other aspects as well. It is the second part I'm going to cut short because we don't have a lot of time. But again, in 1961, the Kennedy administration ordered a top-down secret study to determine the problems facing the United States if we were to go into a golden age of peace. The selection occurred, and there were 15 experts of various academic disciplines. They were selected for their expertise, and the first and last meetings were held in the underground nuclear survival retreat called Iron Mountain. This concluded in 1966, and as I said, Lyndon Johnson said because of the nature of the conclusions reached, that this was not to go out to the public, and the person who leaked it was at great risk. It was renounced as a hoax, and the Iron Mountain is hard to obtain, but it is on Stop the Crime and you still can get it. It looks deep into the soul of the New World Order. And it is a covert agenda to bring the world and America under the control of the United Nations. We see that happening now. And that is being implemented upon all of us without our knowledge or consent. As this documentary will prove beyond doubt, what you are about to hear is real. It is very disturbing, but it is real. It's also dangerous beyond belief, but it is real. It's frightening, and it's real. No person in America is safe, and the plans are coming to pass. It will talk about the rich men of the earth and how they're operating, and how we're being turned into a fascist police state. All the, all the things that we're seeing now, this report will tell you. There's no regard for ethics, morality, or consideration for life itself. And that is crucial to understand because we're good and decent people. We can't believe that there could be an agenda of this nature. At least I certainly didn't believe it. And when we flew back to Washington, D.C. a few years ago, um, we went to, my husband and I went to the records department because there was a resolution that I had received from a friend, and it was about a paragraph, and it said that um, the United States Congress had given the authority to the Department of Defense to use chemicals and biologicals on the American population without our knowledge or consent. And I thought, this simply can't be real. This can't be real. They wouldn't use chemicals and biologicals on us. So we went to the records department, and I was half hoping that they wouldn't get the document, but they did. The document is about four inches high, and it's about half of the page of an eight and a half by 11 page. And um, we left when he was getting it for us, and he called us uh, and told us it was ready to pick up and that he had marked certain sections in it that he thought we would be most interested in. He told us that the document was in effect from 1977 to 1988. And I thought, oh good, it's not in effect now, but 
they're certainly adding a lot of toxins to things. So I thought, well, what replaced it? The Genocide Treaty. The United States signed the Genocide Treaty in 1988. The only illegal aspect of the Genocide Treaty is one's own country cannot do harm or injure its own people. And we're not under a government. Think about that one. So we then have to talk about the bankruptcy of the United States. And uh, this is um, important because this is United States Congressional record, March 17th of 1993. And this is um, Speaker James Traficant from Ohio addressing the House. And this is extremely important, what he tells us. And actually, he was put in prison for quite some time, for eight years. And they nearly killed him in prison. They wanted to silence him. And it is most important to understand what he said. And I'm going to read you just some excerpts of this because I think it's that important. He says, Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in the world's history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who would say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. The United States agencies, government offices, officers, and departments of the United States and federal government exist only in name only. The illusion. They're in name only. He goes on to tell us, and I will not read the entire, um, the entire um, congressional record, but I want to finish by saying, quote, he says, unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution, feudal roots, whereby all land is held by a sovereign and common people had no rights to hold a loyal title of property. Now I've heard this at various meetings that we don't own our property and I've left and I thought, what are they talking about? We don't have a loyal title, well, what does that mean? Well, we own our property, we're paying property taxes and it seemed like we owned our property. They just haven't claimed it yet. And that's what's happening with UN Agenda 21 and the Wildlands Project. They're claiming their stuff. It goes on to tell us that once again, we the people are tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another. This has been going on over 80 years without the informed knowledge of the American people, without a voice protesting loud enough. Now it's easy to grasp why America is fundamentally bankrupt. Why don't more people own their properties outright? Why are 90% of Americans mortgaged to the hilt and have little or no assets after all debts and liabilities have been paid? Who why does it feel like you are working harder and harder and getting less and less? We are reaping what has been sown and the results of our harvest is a painful bankruptcy and a foreclosure on American property, precious liberties, and the way of life. Few of our elected representatives in Washington, D.C. have dared to tell you the truth. The federal United States is bankrupt. Our children will inherit this unpayable debt and the tyranny to enforce paying it. And we're seeing that tyranny of enforcement of paying our debt coming by way of climate action plans, one Bay Area plans. This is the tyranny to pay back the debt. Concluding, America has been completely bankrupt in le world leadership, financial credit, and its reputation for courage, vision, and human rights. This is a declared economic war 
bankruptcy, economic slavery of the most corrupt order. Wake up, America, and take your country back. He concluded with that, and he was put in prison for about eight years. Now, we're going to start talking about locally and what we're seeing. Many of you may have seen this uh, YouTube. It's um, a man uh, being arrested at a local city council meeting because he went over the three minutes allotted to him. Now, many of you sitting in this room I know have attended meetings. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we attended a meeting at the County Board of Supervisors, uh, our concerns about fluoride. And there were many impassionate people at the microphone talking about fluoride. And they had law enforcement waiting in the wings. And anyone that went over the three minutes, the um, County Board of Supervisors gave a little hand sign. And the officers would approach whoever was at the podium and attempt to, pos to escort them away from the microphone. Now, Santa Rosa is not quite as harsh in their city council meetings. If someone impassionately goes over their three minutes, they turn the mic off. And they'll say, you're disruptive, and your time is up, and we're, a, we're having a five-minute break. And that's how they disable us. You've had your say, now go away. That's what we're hearing. Now we're going to see more and more frustrated people behind that mic at our city council meetings, airing their grievances, just like this man. He passed out to the people that were there at that meeting and to the board a packet of information on violations of personal property rights. They were telling him that there were code violations on his property that he needed to fix. They wanted him to disassemble a boat dock, apparently they had had for many, many years, and other aspects of personal property. And he was not getting any redress from the city. They weren't talking with him. They were coming on his property and threatening him. And he was saying, how can anyone have a business in this town? There's no communication. I can't talk to you. You're coming onto my property. He was very civil. This doesn't look civil because now he's being arrested. In fact, as I looked at the video, I was surprised that he was actually cuffed because he was standing there behind the mic very nicely talking to the people in front of him. Now, what's happening with that picture? Let's talk about that. This is what's happening with that picture. Our cities are all incorporated. So what does that mean? They're listed on Dunn and Bradstreet. Now this is a page from Dun and Bradstreet that I pulled on Sebastopol. It's incorporated, all caps, Sebastopol City Incorporated. And they're doing business. They're a private business listed on Dun and Bradstreet for profit. They're a private business. Right under the city of Sebastopol is listed Sebastopol Bearing and Hydraulic Company, Inc. Under that is Sebastopol Union Elementary School, again, an incorporated private for-profit business working for the government, for the corporate structure, implementing Common Core. Then we have under that Hot Monk Tavern in Sebastopol. So here we have a private for-profit corp for corporation called the city of Sebastopol taking grants and signing and indebting all of us, just as Santa Rosa is, to paying back money that you know nothing about. They're incorporated so they can sign contracts and sign grants. That is the purpose of being incorporated. And they're enslaving us. That's why cities across America are going bankrupt. One of the reasons, I'm sure, why Katati recently declared a financial emergency. So they're incorporated. They're doing business, and they're listed on Dun & Bradstreet. Then I went to the city of Sebastopol to get their public policy. It's a corporate public policy. Now, corporations have a public policy, and it's called the Delphi technique. It was invented by the Rand Corporation, and we've all been Delphied at every single level of public meeting, at every single level of corporate meetings that we attend. And I can assure you, you're not being Delphi tonight.
But I can tell you, before the holidays, we attended a number of Climate Action Plan public workshops. And they are not interested in a conversation. We're going to have a conversation after this presentation so we can talk about everything. But the public policies are corporate public policies. Again, they control what you say. They don't listen to you. They don't have to. They don't work for you. Your city councils, the county board of supervisors, are corporate employees. They get their paychecks from the corporation. So does police. So does fire. You're going to have to think about that. And I urge you to go to stopthecrime.net and go to the Climate Action Plan link and get a, in, more information on this. Okay, this is a grant. This is why our cities and counties, states, federal, that's why they're all incorporated. Grants are their paychecks. This is a grant that we got from Sonoma County on the Climate Action Plan. This is only one grant of many that they've signed you on to to implement something you know nothing about. And you have to pay it back. And you're, they're gonna increase your taxes. This grant is only for a million dollars. This is a grant that they're going to share within all the jurisdictions of so Sonoma County. So in other words, all the cities are going to get a piece of this pie. Sonoma County, Santa Rosa, Sebastopol, Katati, Healdsburg, Windsor, Petaluma, Cloverdale, Sonoma. They're all going to, to divvy up this million dollars so that they can write this climate action plan and bring it in to all of their cities. Now, again, you have to think of the corporations doing business in order to sign grants and get money. And these are their paychecks besides our taxes. So what we also discovered in the climate action plans that um, Sonoma County, that Santa Rosa signed on to, right here, that they employed a company, a corporation called ICF International. ICF International is a multi-international corporation and consultant corporation. What does ICF stand for? Well, I'll... <laughs> sorry, if I could take questions at the end, then I won't lose my train of thought. I'm sorry, but that would work better for me. Okay, ICF International is the lead consultant in this plan that the county signed. Now, this plan is a memorandum of agreement regarding greenhouse gas reduction implementation plan, parentheses, the GRIP, G-R-I-P, GRIP, okay, and a, a, a million dollars just to initiate the beginnings of all the plans in your cities right now. It's called the GRIP, Greenhouse Gas Reduction Implementation Program. ICF is the lead consultant. ICF says this. And again, they are a for-profit private corporation working in our local communities. So much for going local. They're paying a multi-international corporation to write plans to further enslave every single one of us. ICF uh, is preparing the greenhouse gas emissions inventories and the preparation of the climate action plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to ensure collaboration with all the cities and consistency of all the plans across the board. This is not only in Sonoma County, but this is nationwide. They want the plans to be consistent because there is a United Nations ICLE Climate Action Plan template. And you can find that on our website, stopthecrime.net, under the Climate Action Plan link. But they're going to uh, they're working, ICF is working with many corporations, including the Federal Reserve. Okay, so I know that most of you know that that is a mafia 
racketeering Federal Reserve doing business out of Puerto Rico. There's nothing federal about it and it has no reserves. They work with the IRS again in the uh, silent weapons document. The IRS is a collection arm. They work with the CDC. The CDC is a private corporation for profit. And they're working with USA Inc. and other government corporate agencies to centralize control of all resources and create a new corporate business model in all of our cities and to replace the old inefficient business model, the new green economy. And the green jobs are global game changers to the way of our lives. We see as an example that utility meter reading jobs for people are being replaced technologies that are reshaping our world and decreasing the human workforce. We highly recommend that you go through this report, but ICF International, again, tells us that they will develop businesses with both government and commercial clients and replicate these business models geographically throughout the world. So this is a replicated plan, a global plan. And we've heard about that. Those that you, of you that are aware of UN Agenda 21, One Bay Area, and now our local climate action plan. This is a global plan. So again, I showed you the climate action plan of Santa Rosa. This plan was adopted June 5th of 2012. So I'm just going to read you a disclaimer on page one of the Santa Rosa plan. The U.S. Department of Energy, now I want you to keep in mind the U.S. Department of Energy is a private corporation doing business. It says, um, the report was prepared as an account of work sponsored by an agency, an agency of the United States government. Neither the United States government nor any ag agency thereof nor any of their employees makes any warranty express or implied or assumes any legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, completeness, or usefulness of this information. They go on to tell us that the product or process disclosed in this report represents that its use would not infringe property-owned rights. In other words, they do not guarantee that it won't infringe upon your property rights. Now what is this climate action plan intending? What do they want to do? Well first it's important to understand that this is another grant, a different grant than the one I showed you before. And this plan is funded by a generous grant from the US Department of Energy as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. The city applied for this money. They filled out the grant form, which is a bribe. The application, they've received the money without our permission or consent. Also, I underlined this on this page of the Santa Rosa plan. They talk about the need to have these plans. They need to reduce fossil fuel emissions. Petroleum does not come from dead dinosaurs. They think we are so stupid that we really do believe that fossil fuel comes from dead dinosaurs. And we're going to get into that because we have a petroleum scientific paper on our website and um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Now let me go over what the Santa Rosa plans intend or want to do to all of you. And this doesn't just only mean if you're not in Santa Rosa. If you're in Sonoma County or if you live anywhere, <laughs> these are some of the things they're going to do. Now, it's real important that I explain to you that Santa Rosa has the most stringent plan in the country. They are requiring that all of you reduce your carbon footprint, your greenhouse gas emissions, or your CO2, all the same thing. 25% below 1990 levels by December 31st of 2015. So less than two years, all of you 
must reduce your greenhouse gas emissions, 25%. So how are they going to do this? Well, I'm going to tell you how they're going to do this. They're going to require smart meters on every single house. So the opt-out was only an appeasement plan, nothing more. So everyone that has been fighting against the smart meters for the last few years are going to be required under these climate action plans to have smart meters. Not only are you required to have smart meters, you're going to be required to retrofit all of your inefficient appliances with Energy Star rated appliances. So if your appliance does not say Energy Star rated, you're going to have to replace it. And they're not done with you yet. I'm only beginning. Now, what is important to understand about these plans, beyond the fact that they're requiring smart meters, is that these climate action plans in Sonoma County, there was a timeline. Back in 2001, they were committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Back in 2005, all our jurisdictions adopted the target for reducing emissions by 25% below 1990 levels by 2015. So 2002, 2005, 2008, community climate action plans created by the Climate Protection Campaign. So while you're all working every day, paying your taxes, and being dutiful citizens, you have a bureaucracy that's working for a corporate structure to bleed your assets dry, absolutely to steal it all from you. Now, in 2012, they tell us, of course, that Santa Rosa adopted their plan, and they did, again, on June 5th of 2012. Now they've identified the areas in Santa Rosa that they have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So I'm going to go over those areas. The, the area, they say, that is using the most greenhouse gas emissions is transportation. They want you out of your cars. So that's, they're targeting that. They're going to have, they're proposing one day uh, a month or a week where you don't drive your car. Now I've looked at the Pittsburgh Climate Action Plan. They want uh, Fridays to be carless days and they want to expand upon that. Uh, they also are re um, requiring that you do not idle your car more than five minutes. Now they realize that that's going to be difficult to police but that's why they're going to have your neighbors watch you. And if you idle your car more than five minutes, they can report you. And of course, the black box in your car is going to give you away. So you can't sneak around that one too much. But you'll get a warning the first time. You'll get a fine the second time. And the fine will go up the third time. So that's going to be enforced. Um, but that's a minor aspect of the plan. Um, the next aspect that they're targeting is building. Building is too much greenhouse gas emissions. Then agriculture. They tell us that methane gas released from manure is unsustainable and requires the reduction of greenhouse gas. They get into solid waste, they get into water, and they go on and on. So what I want to tell you uh, is what you're seeing there on the screen. And that's a collection from a number of the climate action plans that we've looked at across the country. Now Sonoma County, again, has the most aggressive target dates of any place in the country. And they say in the Santa Rosa Climate Action Plan specifically that you must no longer use gas appliances or gas equipment. So we looked at that and we thought, what do they mean not using gas appliances or gas equipment? And only Energy Star rated. Well, we did some homework on that. We found out that Energy Star rated appliances and equipment do not manufacture anything in gas. So they're eliminating gas. They're narrowing down your ability for resources so they can charge you more 
for electricity, which they can monitor with the smart meters. Now they want to mod monitor everything with the smart meters. That's the goal. That was the goal in technocracy back in the 30s. They want to wa monitor all energy consumption. So ultimately your propane tanks will be monitored. Your private wells will be monitored. They want to monitor it all. And that's why they want the RFID chipped appliances so they can monitor if you're using your oven. Now when I was doing some research on smart meters, I discovered in Europe, IEEE, which is the electrical and electronics engineers, they were scratching their head. They had just gotten out of a Delphi meeting. And these engineers that worked for IEEE said, what is going on here? They're telling us we have to put in smart meters because of global warming. But global warming hasn't even been decided upon. So we have these very smart people leaving meetings, scratching their heads like many of us do when you've been Delphi, because you've been led. Anytime a meeting is shaped with a, an outcome that is a, a required outcome, they manipulate all of you. They have a trained facilitator uh, that leads the group. They ask the questions. When we went to the Climate Action Plan public, not public workshops, they had these boards around the room. They said, we want you to write your questions on these post-it notes and put them on the boards. We want you to answer this question, they said. What could you do to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions? They did not want any other questions asked. And when about 10 of us were in the meeting, we, and they were showing a PowerPoint, and we would ask them a question, they didn't want to talk to us about that PowerPoint or the question. They said, well, just at the end. Well, we learned quickly after going to a few years of Delphi meetings, there's never an end. They never get to an end. There's never an opportunity to ask questions as there will be tonight. Because again, the RAND Corporation set up this meeting style to run the corporate structure of the globe. This is a corporate meeting style. And it is important to understand that. They've mastered the control of us at meetings. And we leave disturbed and frustrated. It doesn't matter what meeting we go to. We can go to school meetings. We can go to um, CPUC meetings, California Public Utility Commission meetings. We can go to our city halls, our county board of supervisors. Does not matter. That's why we're having a people's town hall. So the climate action plans also not only require the replacement of all inefficient appliances and the retrofitting in all homes, existing homes. So if any of you that do not have RFID chipped Energy Star rated appliances, you're gonna be forced to replace them. Also, it's going to require the replacement of all of your heat and air conditioning equipment if it's gas any bathroom fans, anything at all that plugs into an outlet in your home must be Energy Star rated. They're going to have in-home energy audits, and this is the part I love the best. The Department of Energy a few weeks ago announced that they're training energy audit assessors that will sweep through our communities and knock on your door and ask for an energy audit. In fact, many of you already may have been contacted by PG&E that's offering free energy audits. Don't let them in your house. So what does that mean when they come into your house? Well, it means that they're going to have a scorecard between one and 10, one being inefficient and 10 being efficient. They're going to use your zip code, they're going to use the square footage of your home, and the information that you gave on your census on how many people occupy that square footage. That's all going to be determined on the sustainable use of your home. They're going to bring in equipment. They're going to test, for example, the lighting. If there's any air intrusion, they're going to test the windows to see if there's any leakage. Now, some of this is not a bad thing. Some of us might want to know how we can upgrade things in our house, and that's fine. Uh, weather stripping. But they're going to require possible 
increased insulation in your roofs and in your walls. They're going to require down the road that you, don't, you paint your roofs white and that you have all of the required appliances. And you're going to be written up. You're going to be on a massive data bank. And they're going to require that you implement all of this. But not to worry. They've arranged for loans, green loans. <laughs> they're going to, well, I wanted to show you this. I'm getting to the loans. But this is actually um, a sign in part on the 101 freeway uh, at the IKEA dealership. And the top of that sign says, kiss your gas goodbye. So that gave us the idea that we can all kiss our gas goodbye. Because the Energy Star appliances are eliminating um, gas appliances and gas equipment. In fact, we made some calls to some of the local appliance dealerships to ask them if they knew that they were going to have to quickly sell all of their gas appliances. And if they knew about these climate action plans, they said they didn't know about these plans, but they didn't believe it. And it's written in the plan. All they have to do is go and look on the Santa Rosa City website and pull the plan. That's the problem. We don't believe what the plans tell us. And we need to start paying attention because this is happening. And we need to know how we can fend off what we see happening. These are the opportunity for you to get financing for your required retrofits. If you do not retrofit your home, you are in violation of energy codes. They're bringing in additional uh, assessors for energy audits and code enforcement. Now, there will be different levels of target dates for implementing these plans, and they're going to become more stringent. Santa Rosa's first target date is at the end of 2015. The United Nations first target date is 2020. And the next target date is 2035. And the final target date is 2050. I'm going to get to that in a minute. 2050. They don't want too much greenhouse gas emissions. But they're going to give you loans. They're going to be simple interest of 7% between 10 and 20 years. And they're going to be collateralized against your home. And they're going to allow tenants also to have loans. So what does that mean? Think about that. I have to actually call and find out. Because I can tell you that our tenants in Southern California were able to authorize Southern California Edison to climb onto our second story buildings and implement black boxes on our heat and air equipment to monitor and to turn off the heat and air when they needed to save power. And when we had a repair on our heat and air equipment, that attached black box negated our warranty. And we did not know these black boxes were on our properties. But that's OK. Um, they're going to also have green leases. They're going to have stakeholders work out green leases between tenants and landlords to help them work together for energy efficiency. So I spoke about the home invasions of the Department of Energy. You can see the full article on StopTheCrime.net under the Climate Action Plan link. Again, as I explained, they will have a scorecard and uh, they are going to track your home. If you try to sell your home and it has any unresolved required retrofitting, that will have to happen before you close escrow. Now, again, um, what is the real goal of energy? Well, we found this uh, on the US Department of Energy website. This is page 83. Now, the US Department of Energy is a corporation, a private corporation doing business. And I was a bit stunned when I read this. Maybe it'll affect you the same way. At first, I, I had to read it, and I had to read it again. Because the real goal of energy use is aiming for zero. They say this is the ultimate goal. It's not to use energy. The most efficient energy is energy we do not generate. 
This is not a technology, it's a behavior modification or learning to live in a new reality. If any of you have seen the Hunger Games, we're heading towards the real Hunger Games. That's what we're heading for. And this is right out of the Incorporated Department of Energy's website. They are doing business, they are a private corporation, and they do not serve any of us. Now, I found it interesting uh, when I listened to Bill Gates on TED Talk. Because Bill Gates said something extremely profound, at least it seemed profound to me. He said that there was an equ equation to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And he said the first part of the equation started with the P for people. And he said that the world has 6.8 billion people. And that's headed up to about 9 billion. Now he says, quote, now if we really do a great job on new vaccines and health care, reduction of health services, we could lower the number of people. Now you can go to our website and right underneath this particular um, page, we have the link to the Bill Gates TED Talk and you can listen to Bill Gates say that. Now, Bill Gates goes on to further say, if he only had one wish, only one wish, he would want there to be zero CO2 emissions by the year 2050. Now, we're all dead if that occurs, because we need CO2. The plants survive, the earth survives, we survive. Somehow or another, we weren't in school, and we didn't understand that we need CO2 emissions. And the bulk of the population now believes the demonization of CO2 emissions, just like fossil fuels are dead, decaying dinosaurs. Now, uh, this is a climate action plan uh, poster that we created. They refer to the climate action plan as CAP, C-A-P. We've rebranded it. Of course, it means controlling all people. But what is important to understand is what occurred in the 30s with technocracy. Before they had computers, before they had the level of technology, again, Kennedy warned us in his speech, we're in a monolithic, ruthless conspiracy that's conscripting technologies. And our technologies have been conscripted. And they're at least 100 years ahead of technology that we don't even know about, minimally. So I can say to you that they schemed the idea of massive data collection back in the 30s. And they realized in order to create a centralized government, they had to monitor all distribution of energy resources. And it had to be measured on every individual person. Now, when you look at the New World Order exposed document, you find that they could also tell if you had house guests by the level of monitoring in your homes. So again, this is the creation of a centralized government and a registration required program and that's one of the purposes of the one million square foot NSA data collection center in Bluffdale, Utah. Massive data collection. Now, I went to um, a recent Santa Rosa meeting, and I thought you would all be very interested to know what I discovered on the agenda. I was looking over the agenda, and I saw something very troubling. It said, and this was the March 11th, 2014 agenda for the city of Santa Rosa, and it said Santa Rosa Police Department's Environmental Crimes Team. Environmental Crimes Team. I thought, what on earth? is an environmental crimes team. Environmental crimes. Of environmental crimes unit and environmental crimes team. So now I'm going to tell you what they're tasked to do. Okay. In the early 90s, Santa Rosa's utility department funded an investigative position known as the environmental crimes detective. Additional funding for the incorporated city of Santa Rosa, environmental crimes detective, is coming from the incorporated city of Rohnert Park, the incorporated city of Katati, mind you, is having a fiscal emergency, 
and the city of Sebastopol, Inc. There, this is a trailblazing program, they tell us. It's an environmental crimes unit that has the ability to employ all the same investigative resources used to investigate other crimes like homicide, theft, conspiracy, fraud, robbery, and gang violence towards environmental law enforcement. They go on to tell us that they will conduct interviews, collect evidence, and obtain search warrants and make arrests. They will go on to their task with permitting and inspecting businesses. They respond to complaints concerning air, water, toxics, and pesticide pollution. And I'm not done with the list. But what I want to tell you, when I saw this on the agenda and I went to the meeting, and I went down to the microphone for my say your piece and go away, and the environmental crimes team was there in the meeting, I said, I have to report an environmental crime. I have to report the frequencies of the smart meters. And I gave them some documentation. And I said, you must go out and you must arrest all of the council members because they have implemented the climate action plan that's requiring these dangerous biohazards on all of our homes. But I said, I know you can't because you're employees of the corporation and your checks come from the corporation and you're not working for us. Just as all of these seated corporate employees sitting in front of me work for the corporation. You don't serve us. If you served us, we would have a reciprocal dialogue at meetings. We don't. Have your say and go away. Turn off your mic if you go a few minutes longer. The other aspect of what they're gonna do is there, they're going to, um, the city and county attorneys will seek criminal prosecution. They will identify and locate and hold accountable anyone responsible for envi vi violating environmental laws. So we're now looking at the climate action plans. They will also use uh, other state, local, and federal entities. In other words, they will sick other corporate agencies on you, like the USDA, like the US Forestry, etc. They go on to tell us that they will uncover to identify and secure evidence. They will use high-tech equipment and advanced surveillance techniques, including remote video surveillance and GPS technology to track vehicles and other equipment. They go on to say informants will pay a large part in investigations, especially if an informant has worked for a business under investigation. They tell us, too, that the techniques are utilized to document the activities of businesses leading to criminal prosecution. And then they say how they're going to work with the P EPA and how they're going to help train other police departments to have environmental crime units as well. And they're planning to do that because they are criminalizing anyone that is not implementing the new laws to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Now, let's talk about what the plans are really about. Okay, you really can't see that chart, but I'm going to tell you what it says. You can see the top, potential climate change and health effects. This is what they're saying will happen to you if you do not implement these climate action plans. Going along the colored column to the left, they say this is what's going to happen to you if you don't reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. We're going to have increased heat and weather events, increased air pollution, floods and droughts, wildfires, storms, changes in weather patterns, higher food prices and food scarcity. We're going to have sea level rise, storm surges, and longer red tides. Now what are going to be the human health causes if you don't reduce your greenhouse gas emissions? Phony, fake science. It's consensus science. And they're telling you, the corporations are telling you by this graph the plans for you because they control the weather. Now, we have to acknowledge the fact that they control the weather. So, yep. what is going to happen to you 
what is going to happen to you? And we're going to talk a little bit more about the geoengineering programs in a moment, but not too much, because uh, that's also another entire topic. But the gray uh, area going down on the right, these are your health problems if you don't uh, adhere to retrofitting your appliances. They're saying that you will have health-related illnesses that could cause death, worsening of chronic health uh, conditions, increased respiratory illnesses and seasonal allergies, injury and death, again, waterborne and airborne illnesses, foodborne illnesses, displacement, stress-related disorders, mental health impacts, increased hunger, decreased nutrition, injury and death. And they talk about how we will have increasing mental health impacts. Now, in a crazy plan like this, who wouldn't have mental health impacts? <laughs> now, what you can't read underneath is that if you go to the corporation called the CDC, they'll give you a longer list of the ailments that will occur if you do not adhere to these climate action plans. The CDC is a private corporation doing business for the corporate structure. So what do we really have? We have an environmental and economic warfare. That's what we really have. Because these plans are crazy. The engineered weather is something that many of you may not be aware of, but you need to look into. Uh, are the climate action plans really going to prevent climate change? I will tell you that there's over 31,000 American scientists and physicists and doctors that say that it will not impact climate change. There are thousands of uh, scientists globally, including Russia, that says we could reduce our greenhouse gas emissions 100% and it would not change the weather. Would not change the weather. So this is a corporate takedown. This is a coup d'etat in all of our cities in the country. They're rewriting a new business model called a green economy. And the new employees for the green economy are those that are going to implement the requirements of the new green economy. The tracking, monitoring, surveillance, retrofitting. In fact, in the brochure that I showed you earlier about the opportunity to get home loans, it says the benefit of all of this is going to increase jobs in Santa Rosa. So I want to say that this has been science. This is all consensus science. This is, again, the Delphi corporate technique for science. We've all been Delphied through the Rand Corporation. And in that black box, I've I've gotten several things written down, and I thought this was very important. World War III will be a guerrilla information war with no division between military and civilian participation. Also, the nation which first learns to plot the paths of air masses accurately and learns to control the time and place of precipitation will dominate the globe. This was told us in 1940 by uh, General George Kinney, commander of the U.S. Strategic Air Command. Also, the U.S. Air Force announced in 1996 that they would own the weather by the year 2025. They own the weather now. Weather modification is a large, deliberate scale and manipulation of the Earth's climate. And this is said to us in the Harvard Kennedy School website, the Belfer Center for Science and Engineers. In fact, I have a poster that we took off the Harvard Kennedy website that talks about geoengineering. And again, more information uh, about what is happening with the geoengineering and the weather manipulation. For those of you that are just hearing about it for the first time, I encourage you to keep your minds open. Don't leave like I did when I was told some things. It took me months to come back to that topic. I wished I hadn't lost that much time, but I didn't believe. And again, this is the global warming petition. 
that was signed by over 31,000 scientists to, to let us all know that all of the global warming ideas are false consensus science, the RAND Corporation. How many scientists signed that? Uh, 31,487 American scientists signed the petition. How, how, how does this have any relevance whatsoever, considering the fact that our weather is completely controlled? Well, could we hold that? I'm on. Well, you mentioned in one of your last talks that petroleum wasn't what we thought it was, that it wasn't a fossil fuel, that it didn't come from fossil animal. <laughs> yeah. Is it just a mineral? Is it a mineral like any other mineral? Is that, is that how it, is that how it, uh, what would you say? Uh, how did it, what's the origin it, of You of see, <clears throat> when they first found petroleum, uh, because they were beginning to make motors and, and, and needed on axles of wheels on railroad trains and all that sort of thing. And remember, trains started in the beginning of the 19th century. Then oil went from a, just a lubricant to a fuel, and it made it valuable. And Rockefeller happened to be the smartest man in the business at the time, but he made a lot of most of his money, or much of it, off the transport of the petroleum as well as selling it. But <clears throat> One thing they realized was if you, because oil, uh, oil is, uh, putting a price on oil is like putting a price on a pail of water. You know, the, the no, no initial cost is in the ground. And, and in those days, they were, some of it, almost what you'd call surface mining the oil. They didn't go down deep. So in order to get the price up, they hit on the idea that they would have to make it appear to be scarce. That, they're, that boy, after we take the next few barrels out, we're probably going to have to close as well. You know, that kind of thing. Well, a very fortuitous event. In 1892, there was a convention in Geneva of, of scientists to determine what organic substances are. Well, the definition of organic is a substance with hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And so it's usually a living substance, a tree. You analyze a dead tree, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen and grass and so on, living things, animals. We are hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So at this Geneva Convention, Rockefeller took advantage of sending some scientists over who said, oil, petroleum, is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Therefore, it must be derived from the, uh, the spoiling, the rotting, of formerly living matter and uh, playing the game properly when the this scientific convention was over they defined oil as a, a residue from formerly living matter well that makes it a fossil fuel I don't know why they so this was Colonel uh, Fletcher Prouty and Colonel Prouty was the chief of Special Operations for the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President John F. Kennedy, a former colonel in the United States Air Force. He retired from the military and held different jobs and subsequently became a critic of U.S. foreign policy, particularly the covert activities of the CIA. So he had intel and information. Now, of course, this is just showing you uh, the consequences of the smart meter on our brains. Uh, it's been proven that the frequencies will injure every single one of us and cause cell death. This is a list which I have in the back for you to take of the various um, maladies, ailments that will uh, injure you with the smart meters, with the frequencies, and then the increased accumulative effect of all of the RFID chipped appliances that increases the frequencies that are coming through your homes. as your appliances are feeding that information to the collection device on your home called the smart meter. So people are going to start feeling um, aches and pains, increased allergies, uh, feeling of depression, suicidal thoughts, um, increased autism for children, ADHD, and we're going to see massive increases of uh, violence in our communities as a result of frequencies. Um, this is a document that we have on our website and why this is so important is that this not only includes the incorporated um, NASA, again, 
uh, doing business for profit. But also the U.S. Air Force, again, the U.S. Air Force was involved in the silent weapons document back in the 40s. This includes DARPA, the CIA, FBI. And on page 50, it says that they all recognize the low effects of microwave frequencies, that it will cause brain disruption, it will cause seizures, and it will increase brain blood flow and cause death. Um, this pretty well speaks for itself. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. You change something by building a new world that makes the existing model obsolete. And this is what I struggled with for a long time with coming up with solutions. And I can tell you that we've worked with a group nationwide from all the way from Iowa and Ohio to Nevada. And we've come up with a solution that I actually have copies on the front desk to fend off the energy audits that are coming to your front door. Uh, none of you signed any of these corporate contracts. You did not receive money and your signatures are not on these corporate contracts. They're doing business. You're not. You don't need to consent and you must not. That is our single most important powerful statement we can make. Now the beauty of this questionnaire and it's to be presented to anyone that comes to your property to do an energy audit is that it's not confrontational. You just hand them this two-page questionnaire and ask them to fill it out. And basically what you're asking them is to show you the corporate contract that you signed, that you agreed to. Now, this is just um, sticks in the spokes of a monster, but we have to do every single thing we can. And this is a start. We also have another questionnaire on smart meters. And this is just really hot off the press. So it will be on our website, but you can also find it on People for T Safe Technologies on their website. It's the same idea, that the corporations have no power to implement their corporate statutes on your lives. Now, these, this is just a short list of what we would recommend as movies and reading material. Uh, you can come to me after the meeting if you'd like to write all of this down and copy it out of the book. But Torn from the Land is most important along with USA Inc. exposing the thieves that stole our government. The New World Order Exposed and The Secrets of the Federal Reserve by Eustace Mullins. I can't recommend a better read to understand the secrets of the Federal Reserve than Eustace Mullins. And he was actually, there, there's questioning around his death. He was on tour giving talks when he suddenly died of a stroke. Uh, also, I would encourage all of you to uh, watch Lethal Injection. Again, this is part of the silent weapons system. Why am I saying this? Because as you know, they're trying to vaccinate all of us that's another conversation for another meeting. But also, Exploding Immune Epidemic by Dr. Tent, T-E-N-T. -E I highly recommend everyone see that on YouTube. Again, the Iron Mountain Report. We have some copies, some CDs in the back that you can buy for $5. But I would recommend that everyone um, take a look at that. Also, The Harvest of Despair. It's the story of the Ukraine so that you understand what happened in the Ukraine that will be happening here in the United States as well. Another movie, The Harvest of Despair. And you can come to me, I have it in my book, and you can write it down, I'll leave it open and you can copy it. Also, Oranges and Sunshine uh, is an excellent movie. You have to rent it, it's a t true story, it's a documentary. Really recommend everyone uh, see this as well. Um, and of course, I recommend everyone go to stopthecrime.net and take a look at the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document, the New World Order Exposed, the Fort Meade military document for non-lethal weapons. They're anything but non-lethal. And America's Last Minute Man, uh, dated January uh, 1st of 2011, 
by uh, James Traficant. He was the one that presented uh, on the congressional record. And I want to tell you, um, I wrote this a couple of years ago, and I still believe it now. To believe the unimaginable, move into a new reality, manage the unthinkable when so many others are aware is really the challenge of our time. I'd just like to conclude with, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Thank you so much, everybody.